Welcome everyone. It's been a while since I've made a video on this channel, but I'm so happy and excited to be back sharing my art with you all again. While I'm sad that I've been away for so long, I've spent a lot of time thinking about what kind of doll costumes I really want to focus on in this new chapter. And I can't wait to bring you all along on this journey with me. To celebrate this fresh start, I wanted to create a doll that is part of my tarot card series, and I chose The Fool, as the card represents new beginnings, having faith in the future, and believing in the universe. For the base, I'm using a Raven Queen doll from the Ever After Highline. I knew from the beginning that it was going to be easy for this character to slip into a look that was too cutesy and baby-like, so I decided to shrink the doll's head quite a bit to give the doll a silhouette that was more similar to that of an adult. To shrink the head, I submerge the head in 100% acetone for 24 hours, then pull it out to dry for another 24. I repeat this process three times until the head is lovely and small. The only downside of this process is that the vinyl of the head becomes much harder, which makes it difficult to draw thin and smooth lines with my watercolour pencils. But I'm determined to improve my pencil work and find good solutions for this problem, because I do really love the proportions of a shrunken head. Especially if you're going to be giving your character any kind of headwear or hat like I will be doing for my fool. The face-up starts as usual by prepping the head by spraying three layers of Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Matte Varnish, waiting half an hour between the coats. Then I start sketching out her features. I mostly use my Caran d'Ache Super Color Pencils. In my opinion, they have the best texture to work with for dolls, especially a shrunken head. But I don't have a huge selection of colours in this type of pencil, so I use my Albrecht Durer watercolour pencils as well when I need them.
To help with my character design, I like to make up a little story for them. I imagine this fool as someone who once worked as the court jester for a royal family, but one day decides that this life isn't inspiring them or giving them joy. They pack up a travel sack and embark on an adventure to discover what they actually want. So you'll see later on when I create their costume that it's heavily inspired by traditional jester style clothes, but also given a twist to make them sturdy for travelling. For their makeup, I wanted to give them some graphic Harlequin style face paint, but have it very pale, mottled and kind of fading away to show that they've been travelling for multiple days. With her jester makeup done, I paint on a final few white highlights and her face up is complete. comparison a little before and after and you can see how tiny the head is compared to where it was before. I really wanted this character to feel real and lived in, so I tried to gather many different pieces to assemble their outfit. It was a tricky balance to bring as much variety as possible but to still keep it cohesive. The first item I created was this brown leather jerkin inspired piece. A jerkin is a short and close fitted sleeveless jacket, usually made out of a light coloured leather, that was popular in the 16th and 17th century. Now of course my jerkin is not historically accurate at all, um, but certainly historically inspired. To make the jerkin look genuine and a little aged, worn in, I use a deep brown pastel to shade along all the stitch lines. I was lucky to find this second hand tie for very cheap. It had a huge hole in the skinny end of the tie, which made it practically unwearable, but perfect to upcycle. I'll turn this fabric into puffy bloomers, and it's the perfect mix of colourful and detailed, but the pattern is subtle enough that it doesn't compete too loudly with the black and white harlequin diamonds I'm introducing next. I wanted to create the look that our fool is wearing a complete unitard of this checkered pattern fabric under all of their other pieces. But I will be faking that idea by making some tights, some fake sleeves, and some very high waisted panties. I wanted to create a very billowy and voluminous white shirt with slits down the front to reveal the checks underneath. In order to not create too much bulk with seams and sewing, I had to come up with a cheeky solution. I create a shirt base where the very top portion of the sleeve and shoulder is made out of white fabric and gathered to create some volume, but then once the sleeve touches the bicep it becomes skin tight checkered fabric. 
Then I create separate sleeve and cuff pieces and run multiple gathering threads through them. Then each gathering thread can be tied around the corresponding area of the arm and secured very carefully and delicately, adding glue with the tip of a needle. to ask to borrow a spare finger to help you get lovely tight knots, but it's worth it for the beautiful billowing sleeve segments. The sleeves will get a finishing touch later on, but for now we can whip up a quick pair of bandies which will cover the slight gap between the bloomers and the jerkin. Once all these pieces are assembled, our full can be laced up into the jerkin and the bloomers. There was no way I was going to make this full character without an amazing floppy hat. This pattern I constructed by myself and it took about 7 or 8 prototypes until I was finally happy. The first version was made up of 6 separate pieces that all needed to be sewn together, but it was just far too complicated and lumpy. Then I basically kept simplifying it and tweaking the shapes and proportions until I finally found this version, which is just 2 pieces plus the lining piece. With the base piece sewn to the lining piece, it can be sewn up the side seam, and then the three pointed star piece can get sewn to the remaining triangular flaps. The whole hat gets turned inside out, and it's basically finished. I found these tiny dingle dangles at the end of some chains I had in my stash, and they were the perfect size to stitch onto the ends of the hat. Off camera, I made the final costume pieces. Two neck ruffs, one shorter, made of red satin, and a longer one, made from the same pleated white material as the sleeve cuffs. I also made some very simple red sock slash tubes, fake socks, leg warmers, um, and a coin pouch on a belt. This travelling character obviously needs some kind of bag. I opted for a black leather backpack style bag. To stop it from reading too modern, I wanted to create an external frame out of timber. I take lengths of wooden dowel and use my Dremel tool to make notches at the intersection of the frame, 
allowing for the four pieces to sit nicely against each other. Once glued together, I can take some brown washes to add some age and a beautiful deep colour. I add some black loops which will eventually connect the bag to the frame, and I also add the straps. a few buckles in the design of this bag, and they need to be weathered a little to dull that bright gold shine and to ensure the bag doesn't look too new. I take a length of woven wool fabric that will become this character's bedroll. Once rolled up nice and tight, I secure it firstly with some pins, and then by tying it up with thread. I use some lengths of faux leather with our newly old buckles to wrap up the bedrolls, as well as a piece of black leather which will connect the buckles to the rest of the backpack. straps and buckles to the pack, both for decorative and practical reasons. I attempt to weather some gold nail art studs with a brown sharpie. It gave them a beautiful bronze colour, but they were still very shiny, and you'll see me fix that with paint later on. But before I can do that, they must be glued on, one by one onto the pack. With the studs on and weathered, it's time to attach the frame and the straps. The full card in the original Rider Waite tarot deck contains some imagery that I wanted to ensure I carried over. The red feather symbolises the flame of life. It indicates that the owner is someone led by heart and soul, rather than basal instincts. white flower denotes purity, innocence, and freedom, as well as serving a reminder to cleanse the mind.
perhaps, since this is an entire bunch of flowers instead of a single stem, my fool is even more innocent than usual. Then I add a few more trinkets. Some are for protection, some are for comfort, and some are just because they looked really cute. I wanted my fool to have true blonde hair, and the acrylic yarn I would normally use is a little too light for what I had envisioned. So during the pulling and brushing process, I incorporate a small amount of this golden yellow yarn to deepen and saturate the overall colour just slightly. I plan to make the hat permanent, so I only need to apply hair to the bottommost part of the head. This is also a great help, as I knew the thinner hair would sit much easier amongst the neck ruffles, as opposed to thick luscious hair that would have too much volume to sit quietly. I cut and style the ends with an eyebrow razor, and the hair is done. The second last step is to make a pair of travelling boots with some adorable curled up tips. I made these shoes out of both black and brown warbler thermoplastic. This isn't necessary at all as it's very easy to paint this material, but since I just happened to have the two colours that I wanted, I used them both. I add the first two pieces onto a spare doll protected with masking tape, but once these two pieces are attached to each other, there's minimal risk of damaging the doll as I attach the rest of the pieces, 
So I put these first two pieces back onto the final doll. This lets me see how wide the opening of the shoe needs to be to fit the tights and the socks comfortably, and to make sure the overall silhouette of the shoe is cohesive with the rest of the design. In the tarot card artwork, the fool is often depicted stepping off a cliff, completely unaware of their doing this. I can't add an entire cliff to this doll, but I wanted to pay tribute to the idea by leaving the shoelaces undone, my doll could trip and fall at any moment. The very final step is to add some white ties to the gathered portions of the sleeve. And once that's done, the doll is complete. Without further ado, I present the full. I hope you love them. Thank you so much for watching, your support means so much to me. Make sure you like the video if you like it, and leave a comment below, I read every single comment. Let me know what you think of this doll, and what you'd like to see from this channel in the future. Subscribe if you want to see more of my content, and I'll see you next time. Have an awesome day.